we're going to talk about multiplying even or odd numbers. So you remember your even or odd numbers. All the ones in blue are even and all the ones in red are odd. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. See how they skip the odd numbers? Those are all the even numbers. And then the odd numbers skip the even ones. See? It's like they're taking turns. All right? Remember that that 0 is grouped in with the even numbers. There's a pattern to multiplying even and odd numbers. So there's three things you need to remember. When we multiply an even times an even, we're going to get an even. And when we multiply an even times an odd, and it doesn't matter what direction we're going in, right? Because the commutative property says it doesn't matter which direction you go in. When you multiply, it's going to equal the same thing. So when we multiply an even to an odd number, it's going to be even. So see, both times it came out even. When it was even times even, and when it was even times odd, we're going to get an even. But when we multiply an odd number times an odd number, we're going to get an odd number. Now what's the big deal? Well, this information can help us to know if we found the correct answer or not, or if our product will or should be even or odd. Now, we have 347. This 7 is an odd number that makes this entire thing an odd number. So whatever is in the ones place tells the entire number that's what it's going to be, odd. Now we have 11,574. In the ones place, there's a 4, and that's even. So this entire thing is an even number. We go by what's in the ones place. All right? So look what happens when we do this. 2 is an even number, and if we multiply 2 times 2, we get an even number 4. Now 3 is an odd number. When we multiply the even times the odd, we get the even just like our rule said. But now look what happens. If we switch places with the even and odd, remember the commutative property says it doesn't matter, we still get an even number. So if you multiply an even times an even or an even times an odd, you're always going to get an even answer. All right? But when we multiply an odd times an odd, we get an odd. All right? 10 is even. If we multiply 10 times 10, we get an even answer, 100. 22 is an even number. It's got a 2 in the ones place, so that makes it an even number. 13 is an odd number. It's got a 3 in the ones place, and 3 is an odd number, so 13 is odd. We multiply them together, we get an even number. We don't even know what it is, but we know it's got to be even. We do an odd number of 31 multiplied to an odd number of 7, we're going to get an odd number for our product. So without even knowing what the answer is, we'll know if it should be even or odd. And it doesn't matter how big the factors are. We could do 2,326, which is even, times 42, which is even, and we know that whatever it is, it's going to be an even number. And we know that if we multiply a big number like 2,326 times an odd number, we're still going to get an even number. But if we multiply two odd numbers, whatever that answer is going to be is going to be an odd number. All right? If you want to know how to do this two-digit multiplication times a four-digit number, there's going to be links in this description. Okay? So, if we're trying to find the correct answer to a multiplication equation that contains large digit numbers, like these, we'll know if the answer should be even or odd. And just remember that the zero is an even number. And the only time our product will be odd, our answer, our product, is when both the factors are odd. When they're both odd, we get an odd answer, an odd product, okay? Maybe this will help you when you're doing your homework or on your tests so that you'll know if you've made a good solution for your problem, okay? You'll be able to catch and say, uh-oh, I just multiplied two even numbers but got an odd answer. It must be wrong. I think I need to do it again. Then you'll know if you made a mistake or not or if you could be right. 
All right? I'll see you next video. Bye.